Hi, and welcome back. The aim of this lecture is to understand what open innovation is and to explain how startups can become very important also for established companies. You will learn which are the major benefits, challenges, and successful cases. Let's start with the term open innovation. What does it mean? According to Henry Chesbrough, economist and professor at University of California, Berkeley, who invented this term, open innovation is a paradigm that assumes that firms can and should use external ideas as well as internal ideas and internal and external paths to market as the firms look to advance their technology. So, what Chesbro wants to say is that in order for a company to be competitive on the market, it should look for novelties and innovations also coming outside the company. One of the most important sources of external innovation comes from startups, which are indeed established to introduce into the market new concepts, business models, creations, technologies. But how startups can help corporates to innovate themselves? There are three ways according to different corporate objectives. The first way is by getting new products. A startup can work with a corporate to co-develop a new solution, a new offering. For instance, a corporate selling watches can introduce a smartwatch into the catalog thanks to the integration of a tech startup. A case study is the acquisition by Fossil Group of the technology startup Misfit, thanks to which the Fossil Group has been able to introduce the segment of smartwatches into its catalog. On the other side, since the second objective for a corporate is to get new customers or new markets, a startup can help a corporate to enter a market not covered by the company yet. In this context, an interesting example is represented by the acquisition by Richmond Group of the commerce of pre-owned watches, Watchfinder & Co. In fact, by acquiring this platform, Richmond Group has entered this new market. The third way happens when the objective is to acquire new people and the relative competencies, not present in the company yet. If an entire new team needs to be created on a competence that has never been core for a corporate, acquiring a startup can be a winning solution. An interesting case study is the acquisition by Farfetch of New Guards Group. Through this acquisition, the e-commerce platform has attracted to its organization a group of people who have shown the ability to create successful new brands. Being Farfetch, a platform and not a creative company, this acquisition might help them to launch new brands inside the platform. Now, let's move on seeing which are the main benefits of the collaboration with a startup for an established corporate. Firstly, often corporates have less freedom to innovate because some innovations can disrupt the current company's business. This can be a psychological behavior that managers are not aware of. Instead, external innovators look at the market evolution with total freedom to disrupt anything is on the market. To protect their strategic position, corporates need to become aware of shifts or changes in the market. The second benefit stands in the approach towards customers. Startups tend to build their product or service based on customers' needs and customers' journey. Their flexibility allows startups to change and adapt the offering based on what customers want. By working with a startup, this attitude can be transferred into corporate's culture. The third benefit is also related to culture. Working with startups can help managers to be more encouraged to propose new ideas and to adopt a more agile culture. Indeed, to be very quick to react and to adapt to changes of the environment, being open and agile is very important for every organization. Although there are several benefits and drivers, the collaboration between a startup and a corporate is not easy since they have two completely different mindsets, processes, and cultures. 
even if a corporate decides to collaborate with a startup to develop a project together, only less than 25% of those projects arrive into the market. Furthermore, another aspect to keep in mind is that finding the right startup for a corporate is not easy. There are several innovative solutions and brands, and filtering and finding the most suitable one can take time. Moreover, corporates can be slow. They have internal processes, authorizations level, that can increase the time required to close a collaboration with a startup. For the latter, however, a few months delay can cause a very serious damage because the startup does not have time to be focused on several other projects and delaying one can be very harmful. Finally, the failure of this collaboration can depend on the commitment within the corporate. If there is not a strategic plan that incentivizes managers to push the innovation culture by collaborating with startups, managers will be just more motivated to work on day-by-day -day job rather than looking for new solutions on the market and adopting them. To conclude, in the first part of this lecture, we have seen why it is important for corporates to collaborate with startups as a key driver for innovation. In the last part, instead, we have seen the main benefits, but also the main challenges corporates face in these types of relationships.